it's 2023 and not being able to automatically scale to the correct aspect ratio of an external monitor is unacceptable. My $50 track phone can scale to, you know, the aspect ratio of an external monitor. Why can't, why can't these Apple products do that? You know, Apple's supposed to be the cutting edge and the most, you know, fancy la di da di da why, why can't you, that, that's embarrassing. It is April the 18th, 2023. I'm a little bit behind schedule, about two weeks, like I said. I'm getting everything done and, and out of here. But speaking of getting things done, look at how clean this setup is now. I've gotten rid of the workstations and the main desktop computer. Only running on my iPad mobile device as my main desktop. It's a really clean setup. You can see, and I'll go into more details uh, momentarily about the pros and cons of this. You will also know that I've, uh, or note, that I've hooked this to a battery, a typical 100 watt hour USB battery, nothing fancy, just to see how long it will power this device like this in this setup. Uh, just in case you wanted to go off grid and have a similar, you know, setup for, solar purposes and thus far i've been running about two days just on that battery which is kind of crazy if you think about it because you can charge one of those batteries up in a day so it, it, easy like if you get to go zero and 100 watt solar panel 100 watt hours you can easily get 100 watt hours you know in two hours hour easy with say a Go Zero or a Jackery or, or whatever, or even something like that, and just a cheap, like like a super cheap setup, just like an external battery and a foldable uh, solar panel, you know. So that's why I'm doing that test. But I want to showcase um, how this looks. And again, I'm, I've got no place else to put the external monitor right now. I've got rid of everything else, but I've got no place to put the external monitor. It'd look even neater and cleaner if I did. But I want to showcase, you know, how I'm doing things, literally just a USB-C hub running over to the iPad and uh, HDMI to hook up the monitor. And it's, and it's a pretty sweet setup. Although there are some issues, there are some things that I don't like about this. And it's kind of Apple only issues. For example, you'll notice the borders on the sides of the walls. And the, the wallpaper I'm using kind of hides that a little bit, kind of makes it look like it's part of the wallpaper. Uh, but even if you like, you go into say YouTube and you full screen it, you will, ha and I might demonstrate this momentarily, but you'll have those borders. And uh, yeah, Tim Cook, I think Tim Cook is who's over Apple now. Is that right? Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but Tim Cook, if you're listening, it's 2023. And not being able to automatically scale to the correct aspect ratio of an external monitor is unacceptable. My $50 track phone can scale to, you know, the aspect ratio of an external monitor. Why can't, why can't these Apple products do that? You know, Apple's supposed to be the cutting edge and the most, you know, fancy la di da di da Why, why can't you, that, that's embarrassing. I would be embarrassed. If I was a developer or a CEO and I couldn't even do aspect ratios, if I was a, a coder or a programmer, I would be embarrassed. And sure, they say that uh, you can get stuff like shift screen and yada, yada, yada. And now the new M3 can do it and blah, blah, blah. But why can like a 10 year old Snapdragon LG Journey you know, smartphone do it on Android? Why do you gotta have a have to have an M? Why do you gotta pay like a, a two thousand bucks to have an M three uh, machine to do it? You know, come on, come on, who are you fooling? And again, the shift screen and stuff. I mean, you can kind of do it with shift screen and apps. There's an app for that, but shift screen is hit and miss. Really, it's it's not what I expected. I really don't like shift screen. <laughs> In fact, I I'd rather deal. With or freaking, sorry, pardon my French there. I'd rather deal with the aspect ratio issues than 
fighting with shift screen because it just doesn't have everything I want to have. The other issue, if you noticed, I don't have a keyboard or a mouse. And uh, it's not like I have any lack of keyboards and mice, mices around here. It's just one, if you're going to use a touch, uh, like a tablet, I highly recommend getting a touch pad over a mouse because even in the setup, you're still using gestures. So to swipe up and swipe left and the, the scale and stuff. A lot of things that are really basic that seem natural on a touch screen, when you try to translate that into a mouse, um, it don't work. So if you ever plan on doing a setup like this, get a touchpad, a trackpad. Uh, they're great. Uh, but, but, but use it for one day, it'll be like natural. It's it, it's just like using the touch screen, but it's, it's down here instead. Looks really good. Uh, as for the keyboard, for whatever reason, every keyboard I would plug in would not work. There is some sort of compatibility issue. I could have swore I had it working when I plugged it in directly maybe, but using that USB hub, I don't know if it's the hub, if it's some sort of Apple tomfoolery, or if I just don't know how to put things right in the settings or what. Um, but I could not get a keyboard to work. And after a while, uh, I realized I really don't need a keyboard for this setup because I'm not doing a lot of typing. And most of my gaming on a tablet, like I do game, I can either use the trackpad or a uh, controller, you know, old school uh, console style gaming. Because you see, I do have a Bully and GTA and Max Payne and uh, Railroads and XCOM 2 and Alien Isolation on there, just to name a few. And most of these games, you know, can be played with either the trackpad or with uh, the controller. And you don't, you don't really need a keyboard. Uh, the issue with a keyboard is when you want to, like, text chat and communicate with people or, or uh, and so forth. As for looking stuff up, uh, let me give an example. <laughs> it kind of reminds me. In, in fact, I, I know the perfect example to give here. Uh, and in fact, I uh, also will demonstrate, you know, how uh, that trackpad works. But a good example to look stuff up, right? I feel like the Star Trek episode uh, where Scotty was like, computer, computer. Oh, you gotta use a keyboard and mouse. And he's like, oh, how quaint. I feel like this. See, if you wanna look stuff up, first of all, you, you can... Actually, what what is my search history there? Yeah. <laughs> what is my search history there? What have I been looking up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, looking for new cars, definitely. Looking at uh, the Honda CRZ. It's another story for another time. Uh, but if you want to look stuff up, first of all, you can type like this on, on the normal touchpad. It's just like using a normal touchpad. You know, it's not too bad. But what I like to do, if you're ever in the setup, if you're ever in the setup and you don't have a keyboard and mouse, right? Here's how... This is my solution, at least, for now. Um, Star Trek. Scotty talking to computer scene. And it's spelled scene wrong. But it feels like it, this right here. The beauty of a run Not the ad. We gotta get our aids, right? You already got some some aids, and now we go get some more aids. Oh yeah, here's another issue I've noticed. Can't skip videos like on the web I have with this touchpad. But anyway. Perhaps a professor could use your computer. Please. Computer? Computer? Ah. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. Keyboard. 
quaint. How quaint. Kind of like I've moved into the Star Trek era. <laughs> you know, now I tell my computer commands and it does what I tell it to do. Sometimes. It's kind of hit and miss. But it works enough to get around, like, if you want to search and stuff. And even, even like, if you did not want to use the touch screen, or uh, if you didn't want to use the uh, voice commands, you know, you can still type as fast as on this thing as you can on your phone. If you're a fast phone typer, I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. And, and that, that that's kind of weird. <laughs> you know, it's really weird. Because uh, I was like, I gotta have a keyboard. I gotta have a keyboard. And then I'm just like using this thing as a keyboard, kind of. And it, it's just bizarre. Well, it'd be really neat if there was a way that you could flip the tablet around and just have like the keyboard displayed on screen at the whole time and maybe use the tablet screen as a keyboard or something. But uh, yeah, that's my setup uh, for the unforeseen future. As you saw there, I had my Steam. I had to cut that out because I don't want people, I don't want people seeing my, my Steam there. Yeah, I think I'll cut that out. I think I will do a little editing. <laughs> I want to pull up my friends list on Steam. Uh, see all the weirdos and degenerates, you know, give those folks their privacy. Uh, because I am a gamer, tried and true. And, and speaking of games, you know, I think I'm going to do a video. Oh, shit. Well, I did not mean to click that. But while we're here, folks, yeah, Feral Interactive has done a lot of um, gaming ports. One of which is XCOM 2 and uh, Railroad Tycoon. I believe Alien Isolation was by Feral Interactive also. And I'm going to do a whole video, right, showcasing XCOM on the iPad. But I guess this is a good example also of what I was saying about Tim Cook being able to uh, fix the borders. Because in some applications, in some games, it'll have borders and sometimes it won't. And as you can see, we've got borders here. That's kind of annoying, but yeah. The full version of XCOM 2 on mobile, that's kind of... Uh, crazy as you can see it looks good let me just uh, swipe out of this though there we go um but final and closing thoughts right the final and closing thoughts if you are going to do something like this where you're going to make your uh, machine your, your mobile device uh, as a desktop replacement or even a laptop replacement Especially with Apple, you know, I've heard people ask the question, should I get the 64 gigabyte or the 256 gigabyte version? And in my opinion, in modern times, unless you're streaming everything, unless you're just using it as a streaming device, if you're going to use it as a real media device or do any type of like video editing or gaming or productivity. We'll just say productivity as a big bold catch-all. You want to get at least a 256 gig model of the phone, of the iPad, uh, of whatever. You want to get as much memory as possible because iOS itself takes about 10 gigs and then like system clutter like the, the system itself takes about 10 to 15 gigs. So you're already down 25 to 30 gigs. Once you count blo some bloat, uh, the operating system, and like swap files and everything else, you are already down almost half of your storage space. 
if you get the 64 gig model. And if you were to say install Alien Isolation, that's another 10 gigs. So to have one game and just your operating system, you're gonna have like 40 out of 64 gigs. And we all know that's not a real 64 gigs the way they do gigs. So that's how quickly you can run out of space. By the time you shoot a few videos, get some browsing history, uh, some cache, do a few things, you, you will be out of memory. So my answer to that question, for anybody who is asking that question, there's I've seen a lot, it's a lot on the forums, and I even asked it myself uh, when I was shopping around, is absolutely get the 256 or more. Like if you, that's the same with Apple. They sort of hard cap you at 256 unless you go into like the, the iPad Pros and, and iPhone Pros and crap. Uh, then it gets prohibitively expensive. It's already kind of, you know, Apple products are already kind of up there. But uh, uh, same holds true for uh, Android, you know. But yeah, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm actually liking this because even like editing and workloads... Uh, extremely good at editing this thing can render and uh, process stuff just as fast as my workstation did now my workstation was really old but i think also that apple has um kind of streamlined or optimized uh their hardware for video editing and and, and content creation uh, and like I said, to my surprise, you can game on them now too. So yeah, I'm, I'm liking the Switch thus far. Um, I still think eventually somewhere down the road, once I sell most of my junk off and maybe I've got a little extra money on the side, uh, that a, a Steam Deck would be nice to have. I mean, I'm going to sell off my VR headset and everything else because I'm not going to be able to use it for a while. And probably by the time I can use it, uh, something new will be out anyway, so... Yeah, I'm going to be stuck on this and or a Steam Deck for a while. I think I'm going to just game on this, like what games I have. I never played through the old Max Payne. That's why I've got Max Payne on there. I never got to play through the old uh, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, or Bully. Or even, I never got to play through any of these games. These are all kind of older games, and that's the reason I got them on there. Is uh, These were games I always wanted to play, but I never got to play them. So, you know, I've got plenty of content as far as uh, gaming goes to keep me occupied. And uh, that's good. I'm glad there's companies out there like Feral Interactive um, making this hardware more appealing to gamers. Because once you get the gamers over there, that's when things start happening. I think gamers, much as people crap all over gamers, are one of the reasons that technology has advanced the way it has, at least in uh, computers and stuff. And it, it, it's good to see, you know, that trickling over to Apple now, which is kind of amazing. Now, like, if you'd asked me 10, 20 years ago, do you think you'd ever game on Apple? I'd be like, no freaking way. But yeah, that's the, the, the setup for um, 2023. And this is going to be my setup probably all the way up until 2025. Like next two or three years, this is going to be my setup. iPads are are, are kind of expensive. I mean, 300 bucks, you know, wow, that's a lot for a tablet. But you've got to think, I have replaced like thousands of dollars worth of equipment. And I'm pretty much doing the same crap on that little thing that I was doing on that big workstation. And, you know, the A15 Bionic and the M1 chips... They're no joke. For a mobile processor, an ARM architecture processor, it's really impressive. And you don't realize that until you've experienced it and did a little bit of a comparison. Uh, the best benchmarks I could compare this setup to, because again, this is just an A15, you know, it's not the, the high end of the high end. Uh, 
But looking at benchmarks, the best thing I can compare this to is maybe a Ryzen 3 with Vega A graphics. If you go look at the benchmarks side by side, uh, they're right in the same realm as far as the graphical processing unit and the computations and the teraflops and stuff goes, and the, the, the benchmarks. Uh, it's right on par with a mobile Ryzen processor, like a, a Ryzen laptop, and Vega 8 graphics. You can go look that up yourself. Not in, you know, it's not a direct comparison because this is like apples to oranges, but that's as close as I can compare it to. And uh, again, like I said, the, the light editing and stuff I've done, I've done a few edits and stuff on this. I'll probably have to edit this and cut some stuff out and trim it down a little bit. Uh, yeah, it works good. Works great. I'm impressed. And I just, I love how sleek it looks. I love the fact that I can just unplug it, throw it in the bag and go. So anybody else that's, you know, considering doing that, um, I hope this helps. If you found this video useful or entertaining, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. You can also leave questions and comments down below. Until next time, take care, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.